hello America. Welcome to another edition of Camping Corner. It's the Thanksgiving edition. That's right. Thanksgiving is in less than a week now. My favorite holiday. Is it? Yeah, it, it is. My birthday's around Thanksgiving, so yeah. that's kind of why I'm partial. I'm Scrooge. I, I admit it. I'm <laughs> Scrooge as I've gotten older. I'm Scrooge about Christmas. But being a chunky guy, I love the Thanksgiving because <laughs> that is the one day that you can eat like you want to eat and nobody judges. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. Hey, don't forget, mention we'll be closed Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Like Dan said, we'll be closed uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Of course, we're always closed on Sunday, so we'll return back to work on uh, Monday the 28th, I believe is the right, right date. No. Uh-uh, that's not the right day. <laughs> the 30th. Only reason I know is my birthday is Sunday the 29th. Oh. <laughs> that's okay. the only reason but, I know. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> I'm one of your hosts. I'm Tony. I'm Mallory. And you're watching Camping Corner. Ooh. So, let's kick it off. Okay, let's do this. Tell me, we got a ton of inventory in. Yes, we do. Tell me what are your three favorite units on the lot right now. Choosing three is definitely hard because there's so many good ones. I know last time when we talked about our favorite, I mentioned the Montana 3781. Still one of my favorites because of the island and the way it's set up. I like the I like the fact that the washer and dryer is on the main floor right And not the in the door. bedroom. And if you don't put the washer and dryer in there, you got that big storage closet. Exactly. Extra pantry space, coat space, whatever you want to use it for. Um, probably a close second, another Montana for me, is the 377 FL my kids it has a loft area above the main bedroom and my kids absolutely love it right so if i had to choose one to take my kids in that would probably be my top favorite um third i'm gonna go smaller because i'm gonna just imagine my husband would allow me to go with a smaller camper and i would say probably the new cougar 25 rds travel trailer is a good layout um, it's got a lot of seating space in it. It's got a nice U-shaped dinette in the very back, so extra eating space in it. That's probably as small as my husband would ever consider going, Right. but that would probably be my third. Yeah. Those are awesome, awesome choices. Not that mine are better. Mine are just different. Right. Um, I love... Go, I'm going to go from... Um, smaller of course you know my 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 youngest one being 13 and almost 14 and six foot tall so bunk beds are out um i really like the 29 rks cougar mm -hmm. i like the outdoor kitchen yeah. i think it's a great layout for couples uh just over eight thousand pounds so you know super nice layout yep um probably the th I, I love the 3761 FL, the front living room. Mm -hmm. I love all the storage space, everything that's there with the Montana. I love the one that we've got with full body paint. That thing's just absolutely beautiful. Oh, gorgeous. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, but I, I would have to say, the unit that I keep going back to that I think is my favorite over and over again is the 295 RL Montana High Country. Yeah. You know, a lot of bang for the buck. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of room for the space, 34 feet overall, you know, automatic leveling jacks, that big window, king size bed, great living room, great floor plan. It is. It's hard to choose. It is. three. It is. Because there's so many. Yeah. And because I didn't throw in a travel trailer, and there's a lot of great travel trailer floor plans too. That's the thing. I think in every brand that we have, I probably have a favorite. Yeah. But yeah, so it's hard to choose just three. Yeah. For sure. So now we've established what our three favorite campers are. Right. So say you're going on a camping trip. What are the four must-have food and beverage? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, since we don't have any judges, I'm going to loop one of them all into one, even though it takes multiple things to make it. Uh, Bloody Marys. Yeah. Of course, Tony would need his Bloody Marys. Yes. That is for sure. First and foremost. Okay. Yep. I just got uh, just got back from vacation. We were in, in Key West, and we bought stuff for Bloody Marys, and um, I 
think one of the people that was with us maybe had one Bloody Mary, and I think I drank the rest of them. And of course, you know, we were flying, so you couldn't, wasn't like you were going to bring them, bring back, so I had to finish it off. It's vacation, I won't judge you. Yep, no judging. So Bloody Marys, what are your next three? Um, you know, hamburger, you know, because you got to take some kind of food. I mean, it's, right. you know, and you could do so much with it, you know. Yeah. Um, I probably some, some potato chips, and then I, I you know, I got to have something sweet, so... Probably some sweet tea. There you go. There you go. I, 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 I could survive on on sweet tea, Bloody Mary's, hamburger, and tater chips. <laughs> the staple of Tony's. Oh, Staples. Yeah, and I'm not overly picky on my tater chips either. I mean, you know. <laughs> just as long as they're potato chips. You know, sometimes you got to have, ju- you, sometimes you want just the salt from the plain ones. Yeah. You know. But what about you? Wine, for sure. That's definitely going. Um, Let's assume that you're not taking your children. Yeah, so probably more wine would go than okay. if I were to take my children. Okay. My kids are still young, so you can't you can't drink too much because you got to keep an eye on them a little bit. You know, they're still at an age where you got to make sure they don't run too close to the fire and stuff. Um, so wine, for sure. I would definitely... S'mores. I'm going to lump, like you did with your Bloody Marys, all this stuff for s'mores. Um, that's my sweet. I definitely got to have sweet with the wine. Um, Probably the same as you, hamburgers or hot, like, brought something of that sort. And what else is my big go-to when we're camping? Probably ice cream. I'm a big junk, I have a lot of junk food. I love ice cream. Yeah. I um, like how both of you guys, your first items you picked were alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> What's your for, man? You know what? I'm behind the camera. It's not important. Because <laughs> his wouldn't be any different. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> okay, guys. So time for which camper is right for you. Okay? Hey. All right. Emily H. asks, my husband and I have a half-ton truck. We do not have any children and plan to travel all across the United States. My husband loves to cook and we both are huge into mountain bikes. What camper is right for us? That's a good, that's a good question. Yeah. So, uh, oh, you can go, you can start. I would think if you're really into biking, you're probably not looking for a camper that you want to spend a ton of time in, but at the same time, he likes to cook, so you need that cooking space, whether it's inside or outside. Man, you put this on me first. So I would say, so so here are the two things that come to mind, Okay. and I'll explain why. So number one, the new 25 RDS. That would be, yeah. Uh, Cougar because it's got a ton of food prep area, countertop space, 6,000 pounds, easily towable, automatic jacks, yeah. you know, all the, all the right stuff. Assuming that they mountain bike in different weather, you know, the fact that it is, um, you know, has weather guard on it, so it's heated and enclosed under bellies, the 12 volt heat pads on the tanks, so if they're going to do some cold weather mountain biking and some summer, you know, biking they're they're great lots of food prep area quick connect lp line all that stuff um, but stays at six thousand pounds that would be my first suggestion my second one would be like the two the the passport 267 bunkhouse now they don't have any have any children but because that that, rear door because of the rear door and Mm -hmm. the bottom bunk flipping up Mm -hmm. They could just put that up, and then they could put the mountain bikes inside the camper Mm -hmm. and just use that as storage space. See, and that was where my first thought went, was the passports. Even though they're bunks, having that rear door to put your bikes in. My other thought was the Outback, the 221. Yeah. Because it's got that rear kitchen, so a lot of prep space in it. Still your king-size bed. Yep. Still, your Four Seasons package. A yep. little bit smaller, obviously, than the yep. 25 RDS. So, a few different options. Yep. But yeah. Yep. Very good. Okay, so, David S. asks, 
That's hard to say. David S. asks, We're planning to live in our camper full time, but travel during colder months. What is the difference between a Four Seasons and an Extended Seasons camper? So, there can be a few differences. One, if it's a true Four Seasons camper or, you know, a true year-round camper, it may have heat pads on the tanks. Could be one difference. And it's a matter of how the heat is getting to the tanks. Is it forced air getting to the tanks or is it a true right. heated underbelly? Right. Yeah, some manufacturers use the term extended season because they um, they do provide heat to the holding tank area, but they don't put a lot of insulation down there. Exactly. To where uh, with a four season coach, you have a heated and insulated uh, area, like you said, you know, like the Montanas, the Montana High Countries, the the Cougars, where they actually have twelve volt heat pads yep. in addition to suspending the tanks so air can get all the way around them, things like that. Yep. Beautiful. Okay, grab your buzzers. It's time for Think Fast. It's my favorite time, Tony. And I got to pay closer attention this time because I found out when I replayed the video in slow mo, Tony did would. hit the button before you last time. Okay. I had multiple text messages saying that I won. Yeah, now the, <laughs> the one, you slid off the button. That was your bad. You probably would have hit it first if you would have actually hit it. The other one, you legit hit the okay. button first. That's right. And I'm going to blame Greer because I told Greer to pay attention and she didn't. Where is Greer? Greer's off filming a service video for this week. Oh, okay. So I'm going to tell you whether they're multiple choice or not so you don't get all trigger happy. <laughs> Looking at you, Tony. <laughs> multiple choice. In what year was the first official s'mores res recipe published? 1860? 1927? 1948, 2019. Tony. 1927. He is correct. It was the 1927 Girl Scouts manual that featured the first official recipe for s'mores. Apparently, Tony was a Girl Scout. I went between that and 48. Like, figured that. <laughs> I think you'd make a great Girl Scout. <laughs> Don't judge. But, but this is judgment free zone. Buy my cookies. <laughs> okay, another multiple choice. How much does the most expensive camping spot in the world cost? Is it $500 a night? These are per night. $500 a night, $1,100 a night, $10,700 a night, $3,900 a night. I'm going to say $1,100. Incorrect. I'm going to go $3,900 a night. $3,900 a night it is. The, I cannot pronounce this, Claycoit Wilderness Resort in Vancouver Island, Canada is the most expensive camping spot in the world. A single night costs $3,900. Well, I'll never be staying there. <laughs> sure, it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm pulling there with my $1,500 camper. <laughs> I mean, even the $1,100, I was like, well, yeah, yeah. better, 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 better be, yeah. $3,900 a night. That's a little pricey. That is pricey. Yeah. I'm going to look that place up and see what's so great there about it. There better be full hookup. And I, yeah. <laughs> I've complained about like 60 bucks a night. I know. Are you on crack? <laughs> okay. Multiple choice again. Tony is in the lead. 2-0. You're getting skunked. I am. Dang it. Okay. What percentage of campers choose state parks to camp in? Is it 10%, 42%, 65%, or 99%? Tony. 65%. That's incorrect. Was it 42? Yes, and that is correct. Mallory's on the board. Yes. Yeah. Approximately. That, that, that was a, yeah, that was a hard, I mean. That, yeah. I'm... Yeah, approximately 42% of campers in the United States choose to camp at state park campgrounds. That's cool. That is cool. That's a good, good bit of knowledge. Okay, another uh, multiple choice. What is the world's smallest camper called? Is it called the Cramper? Is it called Tiny House, Tiny Trailer, or RV Junior? Tony. RV Junior. Incorrect. What were the other three options? You have Tiny. Cramper, Tiny House, Tiny Trailer. Okay, I'm going to go what Tony said, Tiny Trailer. Nope. It is actually called the Cramper. Really? Okay. I <laughs> 
<laughs> it is a pedal powered and has four feet of living space. Pampered. That mm -hmm. doesn't sound like okay. You like this. <laughs> I'm fixing some bacon, honey, wake up. It's like that, I forget what commercial that is, but where they live in the really small space and the guy takes a shower and yeah. then he uses the same space for his office. Yeah. Four feet of, yeah, I can't even sleep in that. I'm 5'2 and couldn't even do it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Multiple choice again. Okay. How many national parks are there in the U.S.? 12, 18, 134, 58. Uh, Mallory. I'm going to say 58. She is correct. Nice. Okay, last one. So I think you could tie it up, but yeah. that's the best you can do. You're either going to lose or tie it up. Yeah. And I don't have a tiebreaker. I never thought of having a tiebreaker. I can't have an even amount of trivia questions, or I at least got to have. Oh, well, you guys could tie for the week, maybe. One of the most popular road trip songs ever is Steppenwolf's Born to be Wild, appearing in Easy Rider in 1969, The Summer of Love. When did this hit song originally debut? Is it A, 1968, B, 1962, C, 2012, D, 1958? Tony. 19, what? You have 68, 62, 2012, 58. 62. Not correct. I'd say 68. Correct. So you guys tie up your trivia for the week. There you go. That. Ooh. I need to have some fans submit some questions for you guys. Yeah. Or like, yeah, and then have like a spare question for a tiebreaker. Yeah. I need that and then, oh, I got... Who is the best ever executive of Camping Corner? Executive producer of Camping Corner. Greer. Wow, okay, yeah. You, Tony, you win for the week. You win for the week. Tony, so favorite now time. So now it's time on Camping Corner to watch <laughs> the worst segment in the history of internet-based television. Like your bitter attitude. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of this segment, aren't I, you, Mallory? I love it. It's stupid joke time. <laughs> a man and his wife were driving their RV across Florida and were nearing a town spelled K-I-S-S-I-M-M-E-E. -E. They noted the strange spelling, tried to figure out how to pronounce it. Kiss-a-me, kiss-a-me, kiss-a-me. They grew more perplexed as they drove into town. Since they were hungry, they pulled in to somewhere to eat. At the counter, the man said to the waitress, my wife and I can't figure out how to pronounce this place. Will you tell me uh, where we are and pronounce it very slowly that I can understand? The waitress looked at, looked at him and said, Burger King. <laughs> The sad thing is that's something I would actually say to somebody. <laughs> it's like the, the, so I had some clients that, that she made me some hand sanitizer due to COVID. Yes, she did. <laughs> and it has, um, uh, cinnamon, cinnamon uh, what the oil, uh, you know. Yeah, the, like the essential oil. The essential oil cinnamon in it. And one of our coworkers smelled it and went, "Oh, this smell, this smells just like Fireball." And I said, uh, "Most people call that cinnamon." <laughs> but I have, to, I have, to, but I have to agree with this coworker because when you add the rubbing alcohol and the cinnamon flavor <laughs> or scent, it smells like. There fireball. is a lot of them at the stores you go to, and it smells like you just put straight tequila. Mm -hmm. It's like, and I'm yeah. guessing maybe that's from some of the distilleries. It probably maybe. is a distillery hand sanitizer. Yeah, I have like, one of those. Well, I yeah. hope I don't get pulled over. Like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, insurance companies are warning campers: if you get your tent stolen in the middle of the night, you won't be covered. <laughs> Hey, let's move on to tip of the week. Hey guys, Matt here with your tip of the week. So this week what I'm going to be going over is your sway bars um, for towing, the noise uh, reduction, and also lubricant for your hitch balls. So here we have a high performance lubricant here to put it on the hitch ball itself. It's going to reduce noise, reduces the wear, corrosion, things like that, and it extends the life of the hitch ball. We also have a white grease as well. 
So you just put a little bit of that on there, keep that noise down. And over here, I'm gonna take you over one of our hitch displays where we have the sway bracket jacket. So after time, a bit, when you first go out, you won't notice it because these have paint on it. This does have that friction pad on it. It'll wear that paint off and you'll notice it makes quite a bit of noise. This right here, very simple fix for it. You're just gonna take this, snap that on there, raise that back over, and that's gonna reduce that noise and that friction on that, put your pin back in and then you're all set. And that's my tip of the week. I know you don't like the joke segment, I love it. I think I laugh harder just because it's you reading the jokes and not necessarily the joke. Yeah. I, I gotta admit, the first one was pretty funny today. <laughs> that so. one tickled you a little bit. I saw him laugh. Yeah, yeah. That, that one was funny. Hey guys, have a uh, great Thanksgiving. Yes. Enjoy yourselves. Uh, remember that through everything crazy with uh, this year that, you know, there's no better time than to catch up with your family in case you haven't been in the same room with them for the last, you know, nine months or six months, uh, you know, enjoy that time and, uh, you know, remember what you're there for. Yep. Bye, everybody. See ya.